All right, welcome back. It's Bob Rigneris, Perry Marshall again. We are working through our top 10 predictions for 2020 and beyond. Today we are at number six. Um, this one's a little bit uh, mysterious. Sorry, Ray, no singularity. What are we talking about, Perry? So in 1999, Ray Kurzweil, who has very famous futurist and uh, had a huge uh, engineering director position at Google and uh, lots of people listen to him. He published a book in 99 called The Age of Spiritual Machines. And some people really, really took off with this idea. And what he said was Moore's Law, which says that computer power doubles every two years and the cost goes in half, it's going to keep going and keep going. And when you, when you, like multiply out that exponential growth that at some point some truly astonishing things start to happen. And he said, what's going to happen is computers because of their incredible speed are going to become smarter than humans. He said that we are going to start having serious conversations about the, the ethics and the morality of like even destroying a computer and, you know, computers are going to have some responsibility for what they do. And by 2029, a computer is going to become more intelligent than a human. And then when every computer, which is more intelligent than a human, is all networked together on the Internet, then the Internet is going to become smarter than humanity. And then there's no way to predict what the computers are going to do. Um, uh, another very famous guy from Bill Joy from Sun Microsystems wrote a famous article back in that era called Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. And he said that, you know, the computers are going to like create a, a world of their own. And he had, he had these very matrix-like um, scenarios. And, um, and Ray Kurzweil said, well, we're going to actually upload ourselves into the cloud and become immortal. Well, there's a bunch of problems with this. Um, now, I, first, I just want to point out that Ray's promise that we're all going to upload ourselves into the cloud and live forever is, it's really just an atheistic rapture story. <laughs> it's like, so the Christian story is Jesus is going to come to the clouds and take us away and we're going to live forever. And this is, <laughs> we're just going to go up into the computer cloud and live forever. It's yeah. the same story. Like, if you understand archetypes, if you understand narratives, it's the same story. And it appeals to people for the same reasons. Same okay. story, different savior. Same story, different savior. <laughs> and and the, the AI savior isn't going to come. Okay, it's not. Now, before I get to that, let's just consider what if it did. Because all of these books about you know, what's going to happen when we live forever? They're all very utopian, okay? We're going to have perfect bodies. We're going to have lots of sex with anybody that we want <laughs> to. And we're going to have, spend lots of time thinking about things. And our brains will run so much faster, so we'll be so much smarter. And we'll be godlike and all this kind of stuff. Well, hey, you know, like I'm the king of Google advertising. And you know what happens in the cloud? Like you get banned, hmm. right? Okay, like, like if, if Google won't even allow a conspiracy theory guy to have a YouTube channel, or if people's YouTube channel or their AdWords account gets shut down because they are, you know, I don't know, they're insulting, you know, lesbians or something. Like, right. like yeah, like you think there's going to be free speech in the cloud and who's going to own the cloud? And what's going to happen if somebody unplugs the cloud? And what a, are, is there going to be spam? And are you going to be allowed to have your own thoughts? Are you going to have pop-ups all over the place? Like, oh, come on. Like, it's going to be a commercial environment just like any, anywhere else, okay? There's not going to be any utopia. Are you kidding? So anyway, that's just nutty. But there, there's, there's a more fundamental problem, which is that a lot of the technocrats that are running the world now 
they think that everything in the world is just computation. They, they think my computer is computation and Bob is computation and Perry is computation and cells are computation and hearts are computation. Well, I've gone very deep in biology and I wrote a book called Evolution 2.0 and I do not believe that biology is computation. I think biology does computation and I think that's part of it, but fundamentally, your cat is not a computer and your dog is not a computer and Bob is not a computer and Perry is not a computer. And frankly, nobody knows what makes me a, a being. Nobody knows where consciousness comes from. And none of this stuff is going to happen. Okay. Now, Moore's law is going to keep going and the computer is going to be faster and faster. But I think by 2029, it's going to be abundantly obvious to everybody that the machines as we currently know them are not going to wake up ever. And, um, you know, uh, I hate to put it this way, but Ray Kurzweil is not going to be immortal. He's going to die in a hospital with a tube up his nose, just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody's going to die and everybody's mortal and you better get that sorted out. Uh, and you know what? One of the things that I appreciate about, you know, having gone to church every Sunday for most of my life is that you get reminded how mortal you are because that is part of the story. Everybody has an expiration date. So, um, you know, and th there's people listening to us today that aren't going to be around in 2029. 20, there's no guarantee I'm going to be around. There's no guarantee you're going to be around. So we better be doing things that we think are really, really important. And, uh, and not like having some fantasy about um, cryogenically freezing my head and waking up <laughs> in the clouds someday. Well, and I think even uh, we realized that even though the Matrix uh, existed, there was still somebody behind the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there was. Oh, and oh, well, I'm glad you said that because all of these stories, like Elon Musk is really big on this and yeah. Kurtzwell is big on this, like, oh, the AI is going to be smarter than us. It's smarter than humans. No, it's not. But I want to point out something that serves those guys in two ways is number one, it kites their stock prices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Every time it, e Elon Musk gets, you know, he's trying to sell self-driving cars, which is difficult enough, but it's a really nice distraction when, 10% of the world is completely willing to believe him that not only are the cars going to be smart enough, but the computers are going to be smarter than us and all of that. And, it, and that makes the stock go up. The, the other thing it does is it distracts people from the fact that all of these platforms and all of these a AIs are owned by somebody. And everything that happens with them is determined by the buttons that they choose to push and the way that they choose to program the system. And even if you say, oh, well, the machine learning has taken over and uh, like we don't even know what it's doing, that might be true, but somebody still designed the machine learning and it's somebody true. still owns it and somebody is still responsible for it, okay? And if, if the machine learning crashes your car and kills your relatives, you know, somebody... Somebody is responsible for the quality of that technology. So somebody owns the technology, somebody coded the technology. That's right. And you'll so. never get away from that. Well, great. Well, that, uh, that takes us through number six. We're halfway. Uh, we will see you tomorrow with uh, prediction number five.